So apparently Final Fantasy 16 has stirred up more drama than a soap opera marathon. And of course, thanks to the wonders of the internet, these voices are everywhere, even haunting my precious YouTube sanctuary. And guess what? In certain ways, sure, Final Fantasy 16 is as different from its predecessors as tofu is from a T-bone steak. But does different automatically mean worse? In the case of tofu, sure. But in the case of this game, I'm not so sure. More importantly, does it signal the apocalypse for the whole franchise? Let's discuss. Ah, 2023, a year so stacked with gaming greatness, it's practically flexing its glorious biceps. We've got Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, Super Mario Wonder, Spider-Man 2, plus more remakes and remasters than you can shake a Joy-Con at. Uh, like, like that, uh, sh sure. Resident Evil 4, Dead Space, Metroid Prime, Super Mario RPG, it's like a nostalgia buffet with extra pixels. And let's not forget the indie gems like Dave the Diver and Sea of Stars. It's a mukbang of gaming goodness. And if you don't believe me, just check the Metacritic data. 2023 stands proud as the sixth year overall for games scoring 90 or above since 1996. Now, full disclosure, I haven't actually played most of these games, but that's why I'm here, late to the game, to hang out for us busy gamers juggling life's curveballs with our insatiable gaming appetites. And speaking of appetites, Final Fantasy 16 dropped last year, serving up a visual feast hotter than a fresh batch of pasta sauce from my nana's kitchen. It's the latest brainchild of Square Enix and their magicians over at Creative Business Unit 3, the same folks behind the addiction factory known as Final Fantasy 14. With the latest DLC on the horizon, I figured it's high time for one of my patented late reviews, especially since, as I mentioned, it stirred up more controversy than pineapple and pizza, which, by the way, as an Italian, not okay, but the American in me says, that's freedom, baby. So Final Fantasy 16's journey started back in the ancient times of 2015, right after Square Enix dropped the Heavensward DLC for 14. Picture this, Square's big boss, Yasuki Matsuda, strolls into the office like he owns the place, which let's be real, he kinda does, and he's like, hey, Naoki Yoshida, you busy? Spoiler alert, Yoshida was knee deep in Final Fantasy 14 stuff, but Matsuda was like, nah, you're the chosen one for our next mainline Final Fantasy gig. Talk about pressure. So, Yoshida wrangles up a ragtag team quicker than you can say Chocobo Racing. We've got Kazutoyo Mahiro, the creative genius extraordinaire, and lead game designer Mitsutoshi Gandai. Just when you thought the party couldn't get any wilder, in swoops Hiroshi Takai, straight from the realms of the Saga series and The Last Remnant, to take the helm as main director. And with the green light given after patch 3.4 drop for Heavensward, it was all systems go. But hold on to your phoenix down, folks, because this development wasn't your run-of-the-mill grind. Oh no, they decided to spice things up by roping in Taiyosi's Kingdom Hearts squad for backup, and if that wasn't enough, they brought in the big guns. Platinum Games, the legends behind Bayonetta, Nier Automata, Astral Chain, and Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance. Because when you're making a game as epic as Final Fantasy XVI, you need a team as awesome as Raiden slicing through watermelons. So when the brains behind 16 sat down to craft their masterpiece, they had a laundry list of do's and don'ts, courtesy of the mix bag that was Final Fantasy XV, and full disclosure, I really liked that game. Even though I couldn't tell you to this day what the heck it was about, the Kai and team were taking notes from 15 like it was a final exam, especially on what not to do with open world shenanigans and storytelling blunders. For instance, let's not bury the entire plot under a layer of DLCs, a feature length movie, an anime series, and more spinoffs than you can count. And then there was Takai, waving his action-based combat flag like a battle cry. Now he knew this bold move would raise some eyebrows, maybe even ruffle some feathers in the Final Fantasy fan club. But hey, he wasn't out to win a popularity contest. You can't please everyone, right? And kudos to him for not trying. After all, greatness isn't achieved by committee. Just ask anyone who's ever tried to order a pizza with a group of friends. And to really make the combat sing, Takai called him the big guns by Yuta Shizuki, straight from the hallways of Capcom, where he honed his skills on the Devil May Cry series, because if you're gonna do action, might as well learn from the masters of demon slaying mayhem. Now, 
Takai wasn't just aiming to hit the reset button on sci-fi vibes. He wanted to plunge headfirst into the depths of high fantasy, but with a twist, a darker twist. Like a roller coaster ride through Westeros with uh, fewer weddings and more epic battles. Think Game of Thrones minus the dragons, but with just as much portrayal and drama. And let's not forget the game's attempt to tackle those deep, thought-provoking themes. Sometimes it's like watching a Shakespearean tragedy unfold with grace and poise. Other times it's more like trying to untangle headphone wires. Messy and confusing, but you're kind of committed at the point. But enough about the design rabbit hole, let's dive headfirst into the juicy stuff. The game itself and my opinion about it. Spoiler alert, it's a wild ride. So when it comes to the story of Final Fantasy 16, buckle up because we're diving deep into the human psyche. Like Freud, Hobbes, and Nietzsche on a chocobo. It's like a philosophical roller coaster exploring the meaning of life, faith, and whether our existence is just a cosmic joke or the punchline of something greater, all through the lens of Clive Rosefield and his merry gang of freedom fighters. Now let's be real. Tackling these big questions is like trying to eat a tonberry with a sport. Messy and downright confusing. But hey, you gotta give them credit for trying at least. Philosophers have been scratching their heads over these brain benders for millennia. So why not throw them into a video game, right? What could go wrong? Now the game throws some serious curveballs, asking if life has meaning or if we're just making it up as we go along, like a bunch of NPCs in a sandbox world. And don't even get me started on the whole is reality even real thing. Now personally, I'm a realist and I'm a big fan of Aristotle, but I'll leave it at that. But amidst all this existential crisis, Final Fantasy 16 still managed to find a silver lining. Love. Yep, it's like a big old hug from a carbuncle, reminding us to cherish our fellow gamers, brothers and sisters. It's a message as old as time itself, wrapped in a shiny new materia. Love conquers all, even if we're not entirely sure what all entails. So strap in, because Final Fantasy 16 isn't just a game. It's a journey through the depths of our collective consciousness, with the side of magic and mayhem. It's a tale woven with threads of love so pure it can melt even the iciest of hearts. And amidst all the swirling chaos of existential questions, it gently reminds us of the profound power of sacrificial love echoing through the actions of Clive and his companions. It's a symphony of humanity's most noble virtues, resonating with the divine melody of selflessness and devotion. So if we emerge from this odyssey with more questions than answers, let's embrace them as the stars guiding us towards truth. Now, even though the story sometimes feels like listening to an angry teenager's rant on an atheist subreddit page, don't let that deter you because underneath all that edgelord angst, there's a shiny gem called combat waiting to be discovered. And I kid you not, this game's combat is so good, it can make a tonberry blush. I'm talking the creme de la creme of character action RPGs. I want more of it. Scratch that, I need more of it. I'd willingly endure the storytelling equivalent of a chocopo with existential angst just to get another taste of those insane boss fights and enemy encounters. And speaking of boss fights, they're so epic, they make Sephiroth look like a Moogle in comparison. There were moments where I had to pick my jaw up off the floor as I unleashed a flurry of attacks on icons and summons alike. But wait. There's more. The game throws in goodies like Hunt System, a gift from the gaming gods themselves. Sure, the side missions sometimes feel like fetch quests straight out of Final Fantasy XIV, but who cares when you're having this much fun? Mm, except for those missions with mid. Those were about as exciting as watching paint dry. And wouldn't you know it, they somehow managed to sneak them into the main story, slowing down the pace faster than an Italian taking a mid-afternoon siesta. But even with all its flaws, I'd gladly hop back into the fray just to experience that combat system again. I mean, look at it. It is gorgeous. But there's still more. Not only did the gameplay slap hard, the soundtrack was absolutely epic. Seriously, I'm tempted to snag the soundtrack and blast it during my workouts, hoping it will transform me into some Hugo Koopka meets The Rock hybrid. But realistically though, look at me, I'll probably end up more like James Franco mixed with Tom Segura. Not quite superhero material, but hey, a guy can dream and at least I got a wife. And while the music soared higher than Joe Rogan hosting a podcast, let's not overlook the art direction. It's sure, it had its moments of muted dreariness, but there were also times when it took my breath away faster than a marble red. From the intricately designed castles to the landscapes that make you want to pack your bags and move in, the architectural nods span from post-reformation renaissance to over-the-top baroque, it's like stepping into a Final Fantasy themed history lesson. Now, all in all, Final Fantasy 16 feels like a double-edged sword to me. With gameplay so good it can make even Tony Soprano contemplate leaving the family business, 
Sure, the story might not be the crown jewel of Final Fantasy narratives, but it still manages to depict the whole evil and the privation of good thing pretty well. And let's be real, even with its thematic roller coaster, the rest of the game is so flippin' fantastic, it's worth playing for that alone. Now, as for the future of Final Fantasy 16, will 16 paint a picture for what's to come with 17? My crystal ball says probably not. Each team will come in with their own bag of tricks and ambitions, learning from the successes and missteps of their predecessors. And while we might not see a return to turn-based combat anytime soon, I wouldn't be surprised if the full throttle action of 16 finds its homes in spin-offs or other score action RPGs, like Kingdom Hearts 4. But my money's on 17 serving up a combat system similar to 7 Remake and Rebirth, a perfect blend of turn-based nostalgia and high-octane character action. But those are just my thoughts, I'm curious to hear yours. Did you like the game? Do you prefer older games? Are you excited for the DLC? Let me know your thoughts below, and as always, happy gaming.